evening, ladies, and thank you for joining us for our HBCU Summit. I'll start by introducing the panel. Christy Frederick, Assistant Professor at Norfolk State University. Devonna Dixon, Associate Professor at North Carolina a and State University. Bridget Clinton Scott, Professor, University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Mrs. B.J. Arnett, Interim Chair, Art and Fashion Department at Clark Atlanta University. And Darlene Ebhart Burke, Chair and Associate Professor, Department of Human Sciences, North Carolina Central University. We're gonna kick this off with a few questions. The first, going to Christy Frederick. Tell us a bit about your journey to becoming a professor in the fashion industry. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, as an undergraduate, undergrad at VCU, once I graduated mm -hmm. to Atlanta, actually, that's sort of where I got my start in the fashion industry. And to start off, I, I did mostly retail operations at um, boutique type stores like Laura Ashley and Taylor. Um, when I returned home though, I decided I wanted to further my education because as an undergrad, I had such a great mentor and my professor, her name is Sandy Wilkins that I always knew, you know, after I set the world on fire, as a pastor, I wanted to come back and I wanted to teach. So I, I wound up going to Norfolk State University to get my master's in art and teaching with an, in secondary ed with an emphasis in fine arts because my, I got a BFA at um, BCU. So when I went to register, they heard me say fashion design and I was saying, you know, that's what my undergrad was in, but I want to get my MAT in fine arts. Well, they sent me to the fashion design program. By mistake, it was the undergrad program. And I met the chair there. She directed me to where I needed to be, which was graduate studies. Long story short, an opening became available. One of their longtime professors was retiring and the chairman remembered my name. At this point, I was a year and a half into my MAT and my teaching as an adjunct. I taught adjunct for several years when I completed um, my master's and a full-time position became available. I became the coordinator for fashion design and I started teaching full-time. One thing I can say, you know, coming from a majority university as an undergrad, I quickly learned what a family environment, the HBCU is. And I was really amazed at my students and I'm still amazed by them, you know, that I used to always say they, they all aren't going to be winners, but there were definitely more winners than, you know, dead weight. They, they really were invested, you know, in this fashion design and even fashion merchandising. And, you know, I've, I've had offers to go on to other things throughout the years, but I always felt like they really needed me. You know, they made me feel wanted, needed, and I just knew I had more to pour into them. You know, when I was in Atlanta, I, I did freelance design. I even, once I started teaching adjunct, I started my own women's clothing line. And eight months pregnant with my first child, I'm running in the streets of New York to get patterns to my um, contractor. And I tumbled <laughs> right in the middle oh. of the street. <laughs> you can't keep doing this, you gotta stop, you know? And I, I put it on the back burner, I raised my kids, I continued to teach. And now along with teaching, I'm sort of reclaiming my time, if you will. I like to show my students that I too am doing what I'm trying to teach you to do. So I- Yeah, and I, I, I really do love hearing your journey because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very diverse and, 
you know, it shows that there's not a straight path. And Darlene, I know you and I had a lot of conversations during the Icon 360, uh, you know, award uh, opportunity. And I wanted you to weigh in on this conversation as well, because I think your your background is, is equally as diverse. Can you oh, share that? Oh, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, I do not have a tr traditional um, undergraduate degree in fashion or textiles. I'm a chemist. I have a chemistry degree from Delaware State University. So upon finishing up my studies, I had room for one elective and I chose a textile and apparel class and it changed my life. <laughs> so just learning color combinations, learning how to sew, getting excited going into Joanne Fabrics. And fortunately I was running track at Dell State at the time. And one of my teammates, he was a fashion major and he asked me to model in his show his um, you know, senior design show. So I was able to model in the show to see the behind the scenes and also to see you know, me being in the class. That's something that always stuck with me. So upon graduating from Delaware State, I had an opportunity to um, do an internship at DuPont. Although my research wasn't textile related, they had some textile related things that was going on there. So that was always in the back of my mind. So upon finishing up that internship, I went to Hampton University to study chemistry. And while at Hampton, I became a National Science Foundation fellow. So they paid for me to go to Hampton University, but also to pursue my PhD at Virginia Tech. So that was a game changer. However, when I went to Virginia Tech, that burning, that longing about something, that creative side about fashion was in my mind. So I went over to Virginia Tech to see if they had a textile program. They did. I felt that I was at home. I told them what I wanted to do, spoke with my chemistry professors, and they made it happen like a textile chemistry degree with my PhD. So after finishing that, I did a postdoc for about a year. I moved from Virginia to North Carolina, no family. And then a job opening came at North Carolina Central University, and that was 16 years ago. So that is <laughs> you know, in 05, then when I'm having in 2021, I feel the exact same, even better. That's incredible. That started my, that started my journey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes students have a hard time deciding a career path, especially when they are creative. Yeah. Do, do you have, any of you have any advice for students watching on how to determine whether a fashion related degree is the way to go? My comment would be, cause I get that a lot to students from like business department who want to minor in fashion. They really want to major, but they're scared to. It's like, <laughs> I encourage all the students just to absorb information. They have access to so much. There's so much content on social media. Look at videos related to the fashion related careers that they're interested in follow individuals that are already in those career paths and just absorb, absorb what is there. You can even connect with individuals so easily, just yes. request an in, informational interview, just get that information. And the more you absorb, it'll lead you and direct you directly to, you know, where they should be, but just mm -hmm. research and get it get it it'll get come it. to you life will lead you to that path that you're supposed absolutely. to be on absolutely and uh, i would also like to add to what dr um, clinton scott has said um researching the program itself and the course descriptions is also a really good idea for any university that they may decide to attend um, one of the things they need to understand or to consider would be um, the actual courses and understanding that as they're coming in, that they're not, um, that they have the creative abilities, which is awesome, but they're really ready to learn more about the creative process. Um, they're getting ready to learn more about the textiles and the materials that they're using. And so having that completed the research, as Dr. Clinton Scott has said, and then moving forward with an open mind, ready to learn how to more effectively apply their creativity and their skill set and to learn a little bit more about the materials that they're using, um, definitely consider that in their decision. That's great, that's great. Uh, Professor Arnett, your department was awarded a grant from HFR's nonprofit organization, ICON360. Can you share with the students watching some of the things that will be put 
into place using the funding? Absolutely, it's uh, quite exciting for us that this uh, award has come to pass. We're just thrilled. Our students will be able to get involved with a project that we started several years ago. Uh, it is our Trends and Tours event where they come out of Atlanta, come out of their safe zone. We go to New York and we visit from the textile arena to the manufacturers, to the designers, to uh, backstage at Lion King. We go everywhere. We are in Tiffany's meeting with all of their visual people. And of course I am drooling and my students are as well. <laughs> we are at Nike behind the scenes and seeing how purchasing happens and buying happens. We are taking that program to another level because of this help. We couldn't have done it without this help. We're also going to be able to award students who have not been able to really reach their creative goals. I love what uh, the professors have said earlier about students connecting with industry. This is all about connecting with industry. Everything we do, we want students to touch, feel, smell, and get involved, not to pull back out of fear. So we push them into uncomfortable situations, but those uncomfortable situations will now allow them the opportunity to jump into a scholarship for something that they had in the back of their mind. Creatives all the same thing over and over again. This is how I create, this is what I do. Yes, but what you do must have a pattern. So this money will help us help establish a business pattern in the creative mind because you can create it, but if it doesn't sell, your heart is broke and you're broke. So we are trying to make sure that those students have the opportunity to yes, create, but also have the opportunity to create that vision to come to so that they are making an income that takes that vision to the next level. These scholarships will allow that. We'll also be able to get a couple more uh, pieces of equipment. One piece of equipment that we love uh, having in our, our labs is our Gerber machine. Well, we've got mm -hmm. to do some things to build that up. All, all of you all know about that, right? <laughs> we got to build that yeah. platform up. But we really want to expand our 3D program where our students are able to design their own jewelry. We have several uh, 3D computers now, but we need more because the program has grown so much. So those are just some of the things that we're doing along with starting our own museum. Uh, Patrick Kelly's uh, foundation gave us uh, a large portion of his line, and we really want to set that just right along with some historic pieces. That is phenomenal. Thank you for just outlining all the amazing, um, you know, things you are building with this grant. And I know the students are excited uh, to take part in, in making sure that this is successful. So thank you. And Darlene, I am, I still just can't forget the conversation that we had um, when, you know, um, Brandis and Jasmine and the icon, uh, the Gap Icon 360 team called and you were just talking about like the two hours uh, and time that it takes you to like come to the school every day and the resources needed for textiles and the technology. Can you talk to us about what this grant means for your, um, your university? Absolutely. Um, to piggyback on Professor Arnett, thank you so much for just recognizing us in this way. But for us, um, we have a very small program and we have a computer lab. In our computer lab, of course, you know, the computers are outdated, 10 plus years old. We want to freshen our offerings. We want to look into digital fashion. As Professor Arnett said, we're looking at Gerber technology. We're looking at 3D clothes, DAS 3D. So just doing some things on that level on the computer and the technology side. We even looking into AI. So we want our mm -hmm. students to know analytics for them to be game changers when they graduate. Also, we have a sewing lab. We do have, you know, machinery, sewing machines, but nothing industry grade. So we want to have industrial grade sewing machines, sergers, um, 
to make our own fabrics, you know, just, just different things that we can do to mimic what's going on in the industry. And more importantly, we have a daycare downstairs that's been out of service for about two years. So we're going to turn that daycare into a textile lab to look at surface design and different things like that. Because right now we have an alteration shop, so unique that's been in existence for over 15 years. To freshen that offering to offer embroidery services with different student organizations. So we want our students to be hands-on in some of everything. And if they can think it, we can see we can put it together for them to produce it. So we're trying to have no limits. So that's what the funding means for us, just to take us from here to the sky's the limit. That's great. That's great. Thank you. And ladies, if you had a chance to tell the entire fashion industry about your students, what would you want them to know? What would, what would you share? I think um, we have HBCUs collectively have some of the most creative and talented um, students uh, amongst uh, you know, all universities. And so I would like to share that those creative students are here and they're ready to take the role as leaders in the fashion industry. And I think that we are doing everything possible to prepare them by incorporating the technology, as we mentioned, by incorporating a learning experience and experiential opportunities for students to gain more experience. Um, and so I think we are um, working with uh, gaining or seeking to gain opportunities uh, to better improve our students. And so I think it's working and we like to think um, opportunities such as the ICON 360 and the GAP, Closing the GAP initiative for helping out with moving some of these initiatives forward. But I would like to say that our students are ready and that industry should look, take a serious look because our students are ready. And if they are not, we are getting them ready. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with everything you just said, Dr. Dixon. Yeah. I, I think they're one of the greatest untapped resources for as far as the fashion industry is concerned. I, I mean, like she said, they're ready, they're sharp, they're bright thinkers and they they are innovative you know they okay. have to design and you know I, being the devil's advocate I, I would say okay so how does she get in it you know because everything from the front or if it's a back detail I say yeah but well, how is she going to get in it and they start to think and then you know the answers come it's it's one of those things where they and they're very astute to technology. You know, they are out there changing things and making changes happen. And, I'm, you know, we're doing it socially. They're doing it socially, politically. They can do it with the fashion industry. You know, Patrick Kelly was the shining star for his generation. Mm -hmm. You had Stephen Burroughs, his mm -hmm. generation. Barry, all of the designers. And the next one is sitting right in one of our classes, or it could Absolutely. be several of them. All. More than one. They, yes. need the chance. they only need the chance. And yes. HFR and you know, Icon 360 Gap, this is a game changer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Professor, you know, I, I so agree with you because one of the things that I think the industry needs to recognize is that these young people are the change of the game. They are, they are the change of the game. They're Without they're a doubt. Fearless. They're fearless. Okay. They're fearless. And if they're and if the industry isn't ready, there will be a new industry birth absolutely by these young people because they're not taken back. They're not right. pushing back. They're pushing forward. They're grabbing onto the technology. They're grabbing onto everything that we're saying. We are all from different universities. However, we have the same mindset. Absolutely. Our students yes. are great and yes. they are the change. So yes. one of the things that <laughs> I felt so blessed about was that Icon 360 and GAP would come alongside of all of us and say, look, we are going to back this thing. Yes. There is yeah. nothing that you can hold back from these students because if, if that is the thought, 
then bypass is what they will do. They are more than ready. And we are more than ready as their professors and as their institutions to push them to their next level. There's absolutely nothing that they can't do. Absolutely. And I agree with all of that. (laughs) And we want to see our students win. Yes. You know, coming from these small so, programs to take it to the next level. And I'll be remiss, even though our current students, even some of our alums, I'm a mm-hmm. proud of our alums as well, but yes. with their, that foothold that they're doing in the marketplace as well, and still having that love to develop thick skins, to learning how to express themselves. So all of those things, they just continue to make us proud. So it's like a continuum. Yes. New students and our alums as well. And we just want to continue to grow. And the alums are so giving to the students who are in the seats that they once sat in. They come back and they will mentor them. They'll talk to them. I'll say this really quick. I had one young lady. She was in the second class of students that I taught as an adjunct. I was only 10 years younger (laughs) or older than they were. And she helped a group of my juniors and seniors get into New York Fashion Week. And they got to see some of the runway shows. And I was sitting beside her in a show and she looked at me and she said, are you enjoying this? I said, you are giving me life right now. This is mm-hmm. amazing. Yes. And she looked at me and she sort of teared up. She said, thank you. She said, that's what I wanted. I always wanted to give back to you because you gave so much to me. And I, you know, I gave her, but I'm thinking you've given me so much because you allowed me and our students to come in and have an experience that they really would not have been able to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I thank you again for the award that was granted to NSU's fashion program and our division of fine arts because it means a lot and it is going to do a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I can Maybe. hear the fire and all the other professors, but <laughs> the game no, it is. We, we, we thank it you. Is. It's true. We thank you for the work. We thank you for the dedication to our students, um, to our country. You know, I think uh, the words of wisdom here are rich. We thank you for the conversation. Um, They are the change, they are ready, and we must invest. I just pull those out. Uh, Thank you so much, really. We we believe in you. This is only the beginning. So um, thank you for joining us for this dynamic conversation. Um, enjoy the rest of the summit and, and have an, a phenomenal week.